this is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy, and horror film called The Siren. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Rusalka is a mythical being who was once an ordinary woman. But one day, while lovesick, she drowned in the lake. The woman became a siren, forever cursed with a desire to drown anyone near her. Al lives in mourning for his husband Michael, who drowned in the lake. Al walks up to the lake shore every day, hunting for the Rusalka, whom he believes killed Michael. He hopes to find her someday, even at the cost of his life. Tom is en route to a lake house in Lake Argo for his solitary retreat. He listens to his voicemail as his churchmate blesses him on his journey and tells him about a gift in his glove box. Tom smiles when he pulls out a bottle of wine. When he arrives, he finds a notice from the landlord posted on the door, advising him where to find the breaker if the electricity goes out and not swim in the lake due to the recent drownings. Unbothered, Tom takes selfies beside the lake then goes inside to unpack. Tom is about to capture the framed inspirational quotes when he hears a sudden disturbance in the water. He goes outside to investigate and notices some wet marks on the floor. Curious, Tom places his hands over the marks and realizes it's finger marks. He scans the area and then returns when he sees nothing amiss, unaware that someone is watching him. Later, Tom receives a booking confirmation email, but the power goes out. Meanwhile, Al is in the woods, cutting down logs and stacking them into the massive pile. Tom heads to his car, then notices Al from a distance and waves at him. Al waves back but remains still. Seeing Al's cautiousness, Tom gestures at his throat then clasps his hands in pleading. When Al approaches, Tom activates his voice app to generate an automated greeting and raises his armband that says he's mute. Al apologizes, but when he enunciates his words, Tom twists his armband to say he's not deaf. When Tom asks where to turn on the electricity, Al points to the little house and later does the work himself. Afterward, the two sit on the lakeside, where Tom reveals that he crushed his throat while swimming in the river when he was a child, resulting in his fear of swimming. When Tom gestures at his ring finger, Al shares that his husband has departed. At dusk, Tom sits on his lonesome outside, jotting down lines from the Bible. Just as the radio reports a witness on the recent drownings at Lake Argo, Tom runs to the lake side and misses the news. While the witness cries inconsolably on the radio, Tom places his phone down on the floor and throws a branch into the water playfully. Later, Tom sharpens a piece of wood, unaware that someone's watching him. Suddenly, he hears a loud splash, so he heads to the lakeside to investigate and notices a large wet area on the floor. When he peers down, Tom sees his phone in the water. He retrieves it and looks around in bewilderment. That evening, while Tom prays before going to bed, Al writes to Michael and shares that he met Tom describing him as an innocent religious man who's never been in love. Al's alarm goes off, so he grabs his binoculars and tumbler, then heads out. Deep in the night, Tom wakes to water plops. When a loud splash follows, Tom sits up and uses his flashlight to see through the darkness. Suddenly, he hears terrifying growls, so he hurriedly flips the light switch. He approaches the lakeside, but he gets startled when the radio suddenly blares. He returns inside and turns down the radio. However, he hears another plop as he stands, and when he faces the window, a woman glances back at him from the water. Outside, the woman asks his name, but Tom gestures that he can't speak. The woman explains that she usually swims by his place, thinking no one is around. She shyly clears her throat as she excuses her appearance. Tom spells out his name in the air, while the woman introduces herself as Nina. Tom extends his hands to shake, but Nina turns her head, seemingly composing herself. She turns back and awkwardly waves instead. They talk for a while before Nina swims away. Later, Tom lies in his bed, shedding tears of delight at the encounter, while a black-eyed Nina imagines the two of them together, living like an ordinary loving couple. Meanwhile, Al puts down his binoculars, frowning at what he'd seen. He heads back to his house and paces the room agitatedly, as he'd seen the monster who killed Michael. Slamming his hands on the table, Al swears vengeance. In the morning, Tom paces on the lakefront, unaware of the ringing phone inside the house. When he remembers Nina gesturing across the lake, Tom contemplates beside the dock, 
Stealing himself from his phobia, Tom wears his life jacket. He drags a boat into the water. Then, after a few clumsy attempts, he sits on the boat. However, he finds that the oar is damaged, so he rushes to the store to buy another. Meanwhile, Nina settles beside the mangroves, where she retrieves a mirror from the roots and surveys her reflection. As she ties her hair, Nina recalls waking up on the ground with her eyes blackened. Suddenly, she recalls drowning Michael and Al arriving soon after. Nina stared in anguish at Michael's still form underwater. Then, with a growl, she swam away. Later, she sat on a stone and tried lifting her foot out of the water, but a painful buzz washed over her, so Nina placed it back underwater. One day, while swimming in the lake, she saw a woman swimming nearby. Nina's eyes turned black, but she snapped herself from her trance before she could approach the woman. Nina shivered as she leaned on a trunk while her eyes were still black. After a moment, the swimming woman screamed as she was dragged underneath. In the present, Nina resumes fixing her hair then retrieves a can of accessories hidden in the tree roots. She rummages through it and wears a pair of earrings. As she admires herself in the mirror, she imagines being intimate with Tom. Unsatisfied with her clothes, Nina swims to the lakeside and steals clothes from the dock. Later, Al heads to the lakeside, where he sees a piece of tooth. After walking further, Al uses his binoculars and sees Tom in a boat. While rowing, Tom watches the water for Nina, who appears beside the boat soon after. When Nina teases him that he's sitting backward, Tom sheepishly adjusts his position. Tom gestures to his ears to compliment Nina's earrings, but she gets defensive and frowns. Frustrated at the miscommunication, Tom gives Nina a flashlight to convey his appreciation. Nina asks him for a swim, but Tom admits his aversion, so Nina offers to teach him. Tom contemplates then eventually concedes when Nina says she'll leave. They walk on the shoreline while Nina remains in the water. They head into a clearing where Tom undresses while Nina secretly peeks at him. Then Tom wears his life jacket, but he hesitates to step further in the water. Nina sees his discomfort, so she holds his hand as she guides him into the water until they're waist deep. When Tom relaxes, Nina unclips his jacket. Tom removes it. Then Nina guides him into the floating position. Nina cradles his head and imagines herself waking up beside him in bed. Suddenly, Nina's eyes turn black and she pushes Tom underwater while he struggles. Nina snaps out of her trance and eases her hold to let Tom break out from the water, gasping for breath. Nina hugs him and apologizes. However, Tom seems to hold no grudge and instead faces her, then leans his head into hers affectionately. While sitting later on the shore, Tom shows Nina how to use the flashlight to signal for him from across the lake. Nina leaves soon after, while Tom follows her with his gaze. Tom can't contain his smile as he rows his boat back home. Nina imagines herself with Tom, enjoying their day in bed in easy companionship. Crouched in the water, Nina turns her black eyes and gazes afar. Later, Nina fusses with her hair. Then she senses someone and sees Al staring at her from the shore while holding a machete. Nina abruptly stands, then realizes her eyes are black, so she shakes her head to clear them. She glances back to Al and shyly waves at him. Al offers his apology for startling her, then stares at her unnervingly. Nina turns to leave, but Al warns her of evil lurking in the lake. Nina approaches the shore, so Al tightens his hold on the machete and steps back. When Nina shares she lost someone too, Al loosens his hold on the machete and offers his condolences. Tom arrives from grocery shopping just as the phone rings. He answers the phone, and while his churchmate excuses the noise from the other line, Tom turns to the window and notices the flashing light across the lake. Tom hurriedly grabs his flashlight and dashes through the front door, but the phone cord gets tangled, so he steps through the window instead. However, his flashlight doesn't turn on, so he hurries to replace its batteries, while Nina gets disappointed at the delayed response. As his churchmate wonders at Tom's preoccupation, Tom goes outside and turns on his flashlight while Nina flashes hers in response. Thrilled, Tom slumps beside the house, just as his churchmate reminds him of the church's stand on lasciviousness. Undaunted, Tom sets the phone away and smiles. Later, Nina pulls out a necklace from her treasure can and wears it before swimming away. Meanwhile, Al's monitor shows a webpage about Rusalka. As he slumps in his chair, Al bursts out laughing. Then, as he bows down his head on the piano, he dedicates a message to Michael 
telling him that he despises Michael's memories because it transformed him into a vengeful man who threatened an innocent woman with a machete. He laments at his behavior, wishing Nina's pardon. Al covers the piano, declaring his realization that Rusalka isn't real. As he washes his hands in the lavatory, Al swears to forget Michael and move on. In the morning, Al heads to Tom's and finds him preparing his grill on the lakeside. When Al remarks that Tom looks like he's expecting company, Tom gestures as he describes Nina to Al. Al catches on instantly and teases Tom's lovesick expression. Al asks him if he loves her, but Tom laughs and invites him over. Later, Al talks about Michael affectionately then trails off in thought as he reminisces. Nina arrives soon after and waves at Tom, while Al nods his head to her in silent apology. Nina plants herself on the edge of the floor while her foot remains submerged in the water. Tom offers her a burger which she tries to refuse, claiming she's a vegetarian. However, Al declares it's a veggie burger, so she reluctantly accepts. When Tom leaves for a while, Nina throws the bun in the water while Al smiles at her encouragingly. Tom returns and presents them a carved wood, to which Nina and Al utter a different description in sync. Tom sighs in mock disappointment then leaves, while the two chuckle at Tom's innocence. When Nina extracts a knife from its holder, Al does the same as he fondly compliments Tom. Nina smiles in agreement and sweeps her hair from her shoulders. With his head bent, Al apologizes for the recent encounter. As he excuses his behavior, Al turns to Nina and trails off, staring at her necklace. Dumbfounded, Al raises his eyes to Nina, just as she notices the identical necklace he's wearing. Meanwhile, Tom collects branches in the woods. Al glances at her foot in the water and tightens his hold on the knife. Nina's eyes turn black then she turns her head away. Nina glances back at him with clear eyes and pulls her necklace, offering it to Al, who shakes in rage. When Al doesn't reach for it, Nina drops the necklace and turns her eyes black. Speaking in a strange voice, Nina orders him to flee. Al drops his knife and runs. Tom returns from the woods and finds a distraught Nina who hands him back the flashlight and says she isn't who he thinks she is. When Tom tries to hold her, Nina flinches and dives into the water after a hurried apology. Tom paces and claps to call Nina's attention. When Nina doesn't reappear, Tom swims into the murky water but to no avail. Tom lifts himself from the water and lies on the floor, gasping for breath just as Nina reappears. Later, as they sit on the floor's edge, Nina eventually confesses to the recent drownings on the lake. She claims she can't stop, like how she can't stop her heart from beating. However, Nina admits the only time she'd stop was with Tom. She stares at him, but Tom looks away. When Tom flinches away from her, Nina dives and disappears into the water, and Tom leaves soon after. Meanwhile, a girl in the water notices Nina's silhouette from afar. Nina engages the child in a peekaboo game, then approaches her. Nina extends her hand to the child, who gives her a high five, thinking that Nina's playing with her. Nina is taken aback while the child smiles at her innocently. Playing a video of him and Michael playing the piano, Al watches from his chair in melancholy and later smokes outside. Tom finishes packing and leaves the house. Outside, Nina waves at him from the water. Tom gestures for her to come with him, but Nina remains unmoving. When Tom leaves, Nina forces herself out of the water, but she immediately weakens. As Nina twitches on the floor, her eyes turn white and she loses consciousness. Nina soon wakes up being lifted by Tom, who smiles at her. Afterward, Tom brings her a change of clothes. Later, the two lie beside each other while Nina's feet are back in the water. Nina's eyes turn black, but Tom caresses her face lovingly. When the sensation intensifies, Nina grabs Tom's hand, worrying that she might hurt him. Tom only smiles at her. Then, as her eyes turn black again, Nina caresses Tom, who grabs her for a kiss. After a while, as they cuddle, Nina imagines herself in the water, with eyes completely black. While the clouds rumble, she sees Tom with his eyes black as well. When Tom approaches her in her sanctuary, they smile as they regard each other. Then, Tom wakes up and glances at Nina. Tom gestures for a drink and leaves Nina on their makeshift bed. When Tom reaches his car, a man hits his leg from behind, making Tom slump beside the car. The man hits him again and knocks him out, then cuffs him to the car. Nina is asleep, unaware of the threat creeping behind her. 
Soon, Tom regains consciousness and struggles from his cuffs. He looks down at his bloody leg, where a bone sticks out. Then, Tom struggles to pull his hands from the cuff. While holding a mallet, Al looks down at Nina. Meanwhile, Tom successfully frees himself, then hops towards the house. Al lifts the mallet and closes his eyes to calm himself. But when he opens them, Nina has awakened. Al unceremoniously bludgeons Nina, and Tom arrives soon after. Enraged, Tom pushes Al, but Al kicks his leg injury, making Tom fall in extreme pain. While Al stares at him murderously, a monstrous Nina appears behind and drags him into the water. Al struggles in the water until he drowns, seeing Michael's back before he disappears into the lake. Nina soon emerges from the water with her back to Tom. As Nina glances at him, she imagines them hugging affectionately. Then, Nina raises her face in heartbreak and disappears into the water. As Tom moves his eyes searchingly, a black-eyed Nina abruptly appears and snarls at his face. Tom gasps and recoils, but Nina disappears soon after. In the morning, the girl in the water smiles while staring at a distance. Meanwhile, Tom gazes in the lake amidst the rain. That night, he rows his boat and points his blinking flashlight into the darkness, but there's no sign of Nina. Later, while sitting in bed, Tom imagines himself lying on the ground, his eyes completely black. He sees himself approaching Nina in the water, then in bed as they affectionately rub noses. Tom returns to the the lakeside and lifts his lamp into the darkness. He stays in the water until morning, but Nina never appears again. Later, Tom gazes one last time into the lake with his bags beside him. Soon, he walks away, unaware of Nina emerging from the water and watching him leave. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.